Huh? Who am I? I worked here my whole life. <laughs> used to be a big practical joker with me, even though he was a boot at the time. He, him and my, somebody else strung an IV up over my bed, <coughs> and then he controlled it from his side over on the other side of the wall, and it started dripping on me, and I thought I had a leak in the roof, and got up, couldn't find nothing, and this kept going on for a while, and finally I could hear him over there laughing, and I knew, well, he's up to something. And anyway, he turned the lights on, and I found the IV bag hanging up over the bed. I said, just hit that gas and head for that fire, I says as fast as you can. So he's down there, and Jim Jensen's in the back back seat of that ca uh, coast, you know. And he says, "I don't mean to tell you we're going fast, but he says those telephone poles look like a picket fence." <laughs> Frank uh, Brown and I both took our maiden voyage together on the ambulance for the first time. And uh, one of the fun calls that we had was a young man had come off a motorcycle and landed on top of a uh, brick uh, construction company truck carrying scaffolds. and. Well, when we got through bandaging him up, why he looked like a mummy, and some nurse came by and felt around on him and uh, said, you did a beautiful job, but he's dead. So that was our first patient. We had some comical uh, calls sometimes too. We had this uh, little old lady, uh, probably in her 80s, 90s, and she called up, was in a panic. She says, my, my water on my uh, sink, and my bathroom won't turn off. It keeps running. I'm afraid it's going to overflow and go all over the floor and everything. So, well, we'll come out and have a look. And we go over there and show it to us. She says, well, 
this little thing. She says, I, I keep turning it and it won't shut off. What she was doing is it was a plunger. She was turning that. And so I told her, I said, well, you gotta turn these little faucets <laughs> off. She felt pretty silly, but I guess she <laughs> hadn't realized what she was doing. I can remember one time we were on a call on 3300 South and it was probably like 27 or 2800 East and that was before it became industrialized and there was a lot of homes up there and it was a full rest and we were doing CPR and everything on the guy and that's when we had the old Roberts Shaw resuscitators where you had to just put it on the mouth and the resuscitator cycled, you know, shh, click, shh, click, shh, click. Positive pressure, breathing all the time. Uh, it would turn around and do that and you had to hold that onto the face and then somebody had to do CPR. So we're in the back of the Cadillac, they took, and this was a Cadillac that had two stretchers, so they took one stretcher out, put it off the side of the road, and then turn around we were in the back doing CPR, cop got in, took off, went down to St. Mark's Hospital. Well, we got done at the hospital and then as natural, we've got equipment still back at the scene. We went back to get our stretcher and our stretcher was gone. That part of 33rd South was quite an incline. It was eight blocks away on the opposite side of the road. Don't know how many vehicles it hit going down 33rd South. Cops had found it, you know. So when we got there, couldn't find it. They called the police and the police says, oh yeah, it's down here. So we had to go down and pick it up. And yeah, there were scuff marks on it, but we didn't stop to see what, how many cars it got. Of course, the Sherman Williams fire in in uh, Holiday. I'm not sure the year of that, but it was a huge fire, and and I actually had what I call a flashover. I was uh, alone on an inch and a half line, and in the middle of the building when uh, a flashover went over my head and scared the crap out of me, but uh, didn't cause any damage. Uh, I had the crew trying to ventilate the roof of that building and we found out that it was a poured concrete roof and <laughs> impossible to, to uh, ventilate. have lots of memories of different little experiences and things uh, that you don't forget. A little stupid things. I remember my captain was named Q Christensen and he had this uh, he liked to sleep when, with the windows all open in the dorm. And they had to get cold up there. We had this one guy started up there and he'd plug his blanket, he had an electric blanket, and he'd plug it in and cue it and he can put the one plug in. So it looked like it was plugged in, but it wasn't. 
he shivered every night till he figured it out. Because <laughs> the light would still be on on his control. <laughs> oh, brother. Sondrup and I were down here on a fire, uh, showing you what it is. Was a uh, shop that had burned, and it really done a job. And the time we got the fire out, we was in there, wet in there, making sure everything was out. You know, well, we didn't know exactly what was in the shop to begin with. And we, he had the nozzle, I was behind him, he had the nozzle and was going this way and I was helping him hold the bucket and the hose for him. And uh, he had a bucket of carbide with that nozzle. Oh my hell. Whom. A lot of good times. A lot of good times. Enjoy the job. You know, it goes by so fast, it'll be gone before you even know it. Uh, what I miss most, I, I guess, is the camaraderie with all the guys and the fun. People would say, how many years have you got on? And I'd say 30, 35. Uh, and uh, I'd always ask, how many years have you got on? Well, I've got uh, a year. And I'd say, if I had that long to go, I'd cut both wrists. But it's really the greatest job that you'll ever have. Uh, enjoy every minute that you're in it. A lot of us look forward to, oh, can't wait till we retire, can't wait till we retire. And you get off, and when you do retire, you kind of lost a little bit right at first. Uh, some of the friends and, and just the adrenaline uh, rush and the, the fun feeling of doing something good, you know, putting fires out and stuff. Uh, you miss a lot of that. I mean, some of it I don't. Sometimes I'm thinking, oh boy, I'm not working anymore. But there are times you really do miss it. So. Try and keep calm. You get on a fire, use your head a bit. Trying to remember what they told you. Don't go running in the front door unless you know what's in, what's in there, really. Because uh, sometimes you go through the front door and the floor's burned out. <laughs> I miss the men because it was like a family. We uh, we used to uh, uh, get together when we'd be on a 24-hour job. Of course, now it's 48, isn't it? We'd, we'd be together there for 24 hours, and uh, you know we're, we were we were family, and we got along good, and we worked good together. Enjoy it. It's lots of fun. It's lots of excitement. Just follow the rules of the game as they are now. They're probably a lot different than when I hired on, but you got to put up with the baloney that's put at you at times. You got to just enjoy it. Like I said, you'll see things that most people won't believe. Keep your nose clean. <laughs> well, uh, my, you know, I think each individual has his own personalities and, and they have their own personality, they have their own commitment. And I think if you want to be 
a fireman, paramedic, whatever you want to be, you give it the best shot you can and appreciate that you're lucky enough to have the job that you got, that you're damn lucky now that you and that just hang with it because it's well, it's worth the wait. I just, uh, it's probably the smartest thing I ever did in my life.